The Arcane Staff, one of the most infamous weapons for being versatile and basically a meta counter in Corrupted Dungeons, just got stronger. The last patch brought some well needed buffs to certain items and made this Arcane Staff build that I'm about to show you right now almost unbeatable if you play your cards right. And in this video, I'm gonna make sure that you play your cards right. So check it out. I'm using this Cowl of Purity. I know. Please don't hate me. This is more, this is honestly more expensive than this. I bought it for like 160k. I like to think that I got baited. Hopefully I did. So you want to use Call of Purity, third spell, first pass. You want to use Assassin Jacket. It's actually important that you use Assassin Jacket because the reason you use this is for the, and the magical ability bonus. You get 34% with something like Mercenary Jacket, which is what you usually use with Arcane Staff. You get just a 20%. Not a lot of people are aware of this, but uh, even though all jackets have the same abilities, they do have different stats. You have to keep track of those stats just to make sure that you know what's best for you to use. The Assassin Jacket is probably your best bet with the second spell, first pass. You want to use next, Soldier Boots. You can use any plate boots, you just need them for this and for the second passive. You want to use Tedford Cape, I'm going to explain what this does in a second. Mist Collar with Arcane Staff, everything first slot. Because this is everything first slot means that you can play this build with zero spec because you have everything unlocked straight up. Now, should you play this build with zero spec? Well, I don't know, because there are certain situations in which you might want to swap to Mimic, for example, whenever you're fighting a fire staff. As for potions, you want to have healing potions with resistance potions as a swap in case you're fighting one shots or curse staffs. And uh, you want to have pork omelet, ideally enchanted pork omelet, like 0.1, that's what I'm using right now, for your food. You could also use Avalonian pork omelet, which increases your resistance. Honestly, it's good, but I prefer 0.1 or 0.2 pork omelets like if you're willing to buy an avalonian pork omelet buy a i mean avalonian omelet buy a 0.2 pork omelet that's uh, that would be probably your best best bet okay let me explain the abilities first of all the q drops a missile that chains between enemies so if i pve with this it's gonna hit one enemy but then jump between them dealing less damage than the initial hit uh over that it's also gonna apply what's called an arcane charge basically look at this and you see the mob glowing uh purple if I hit him, I'm actually going to do an extra amount of damage. So I'm doing the normal auto attack damage plus 150 before resistances uh, damage. So I do this. I do the damage from the arcane charge. This 23 was the auto attack. Everything else was the, um, uh, the bonus damage. You want to use this as your main spammable and you want to make sure that you start auto attacking after. The reason you want to start auto attacking after is because of the passive. This passive makes it so every single time you use an ability, whatever ability that might be, it doesn't matter. You will get three very fast auto attacks that have a 120% increase in range. So they have higher range. Basically, this activates whenever you use any ability whatsoever. You can use anything. But the best ability to use for that is actually your Qs. Because they're on a tw two seconds cooldown. And if you use them properly, you can basically just keep the auto attack chain going forever and ever and ever. Which is great. The W. It's a, it's a two stage ability. First stage... You do this, dealing AoE damage. Second stage, you teleport. While you're teleporting, you have an iframe. Third ability, your E. This, very high range. Look at the Q, for example. And now look at the E. Very high range. Basically, first of all, it silences. It purges all buffs and it deals damage. In this order. It silences, does damage, and uh, purges. I mean, I'm not sure about the damage or the silence. If they happen... First of all, like damage first, then uh, silence or silence, then damage. But what's important is that it first purges, then it deals damage. Why is this important? Because if my enemy had a reflect and I do this and it first dealt damage, then I first get reflected the damage and then I purge the reflect. But it does it the other way around. That's very important. Then you have your own reflect and your damage, in, uh, damage resistance increase. You want to use this as a default. Some scenarios, in some scenarios, you might actually want to swap to the invisibility. For example, when you're fighting curse staffs, in case you want to reset the stacks. When you're fighting fire staffs, in case they're using fire artillery, it's a great idea to have this. Though, you don't really need that. And you want to have this, which is the get beamed noob ability. You gotta yell get beamed noob every single time you use this, which you just saw. It's a very high range ability, very similar to your E. Might actually be higher range than your E. That deals damage and interrupts. You can use this against the cultist robes. You can use this against curse staff E's. If you have good timing, you can use this against any spell that would mess you up if you don't interrupt it. You can also use your E as an interrupt. It very much interrupts. I'm actually curious to see if this is high range. 
Okay, no, it's about the same range as your E. And the F is just sprint while you also heal for 131 HP over 5 seconds. The Tedford Cape itself makes it so you basically deal uh, ton of damage. You deal extra damage whenever you do an auto attack every 15 seconds. You saw that 109 damage, that was from the Tedford Cape. The Mistwalker makes it so you restore cooldowns very, very, very fast. And that's about it. And that's about it. I'll be honest with you, chat. I'm not sure what would be a tough matchup for this. I am not sure what would be a tough matchup for this. But I guess, hey, let's figure it out together. Let's check it out. See, normally, I wouldn't have so much pressure on the on the healer. Let's go! Normally, I wouldn't be able to kill uh, healers. If I said get beam noob, I, I would have dealt at, at least two hundred percent more damage with my with my C. But I forgot. Okay. Another? Okay, I can interrupt his jacket with this, and that's kind of what I want to be doing. At the same time, I can also interrupt it with my E, so it's not really the biggest deal. See what I mean, chat? The pressure is insane with this. Yeet me, please. You have been yeeted, sir. You have truly been yeeted. Hey, you dead, my dude! Good, you man. dead! <laughs> oh man, what an outplay with the W! Did you guys see that W? No, what? I need to be very careful. He used his uh, assassin shoes. Man, I'm countering everything, even though I missed my E, I'm genuinely just countering stuff. Man, I'm just count like... Wow! Wow! I played so well, but yet so bad at the same time. Ben, if that didn't hit, get beamed, noob! Get beamed, noob! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Man, outplayed, straight up outplayed. Let's finish him off beautifully. Boom! Outplayed, man, outplayed. 
Let's go! That was great, man. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash Mogdan. This video was made possible by our amazing channel members. If you want to support by becoming a channel member yourself, you are going to get access to amazing emotes that you can use in the comment section or during live streams, member-only polls, and lots of other awesome perks. Shout out to all of you awesome badasses. Thank you so much for supporting us.